newly rebranded global asset management firm with a name you might recognize launched this week. Bearings is now a $275 billion firm following the successful merger of some affiliates of Mass Mutual. I'm joined by the new chairman and CEO, Tom Fink. Tom, great to see you here. Great to be here. So why did this combination make sense right now and why the Bearings name? Sure. Well, when you look at what we brought together, it's, it's really bringing together BAFs and Capital Management, a $240 billion manager, a sub of Mass Mutual, and its two subsidiaries, Cornerstone Real Estate Advisors and Wood Creek Capital Management, with our sister company, Bearings Asset Management. And you know, there are several principles behind why we're doing this now. First and foremost is across those firms, we had very complementary capabilities. Global fixed income and global credit, uh, in particular at Babson, uh, international equities at Bearings, real estate at Cornerstone, obviously, and, and then alternatives at Wood Creek. But our main client are large institutional investors. And the large institutional investors are looking to work with fewer managers with broader capabilities. And we felt by coming together as one firm and approaching our clients as one entity, we could serve them better. And definitely, you can see in this day and age, investors want to be in a little piece of everything. So it does make sense. Of all this combined business, mm -hmm. what areas are prime for growth, would you say? Sure. Well, we've had strong growth uh, really since the crisis and in, especially in the last few years in our global high yield businesses. Uh, we're one of the largest managers of high yield loans and bonds in the U.S. and Europe. Uh, our private credit business, a lot of institutions are, are very interested in finding yield in private credit, and we've had a tremendous growth, growth there. We've raised over $3 billion in the last uh, year and a half uh, in that space. But there's other places that are growing. Real estate is a growth business. We think there's opportunities to expand beyond our footprint in the U.S. and Europe into Asia. Mm. Uh, and then alternatives is, is a big part of that growth strategy as well. Uh, clearly, alternative assets are in, in high demand. We have strong capabilities between uh, the Babson and Wood Creek team coming together as bearing alternatives. Again, this search for yield and trying to really maximize investments. It's critical. In the direct lending business, in terms mm -hmm. of growth opportunities, how might that shape out over the next couple of years? Well, for, for many, they see that as a new, new place to be, and actually it's a place we've been for a long time. Uh, we've been in the uh, sponsor-driven MES business in the U.S. for decades, uh, and we've been in the market in Europe since 2004 and in Asia PAC since 2009. So what we've done is really brought together it as one platform. And what we're doing is really being able to offer investors the opportunity to get yield but also diversify around the globe in terms of credit risk and, and portfolio concentration. Does this broader combination help you on the fee side of your business or is asset management such these days where there's not as much um, wiggle room, if you will, on the fee side? Well, it's really about understanding where fees are going. And, and if you think about business in general, we, we are seeing a deflationary trend in a lot of industries and asset management's no different. Uh, in an extended low yield environment, fees take up a bigger part of the return. So over time, fees will come down. What this does for us is allow us to be more efficient, to scale more of our fixed costs by bringing our distribution teams together across bearings and, and BAPS, and we now can scale a, a more efficient distribution system, for instance. Um, and, and there are other areas, obviously, in infrastructure, risk management, the cost of doing business. We all know that compliance costs have grown dramatically in asset management and, and the ability to scale that instead of having overlapping, uh, overlapping pieces. We've touched on a number of issues, but what is the biggest challenge right now in your industry that you kind of think of when you move forward? Is it on the cost side? Is it regulation or is it something else? Regulation is, is clearly a big cost. I think a larger manager like us has ability to scale their investment in that. Uh, so that um, you know, is an issue for everybody. Maybe it's more of an issue for smaller firms because we have to all play by the same rules. Uh, I think at the end of the day, the biggest challenge is, is really the clients want more. 
They want more thought leadership. They want more uh, transparency. They want more service. And they should ask for it. And we've been able to deliver that successfully as four separate firms. We think we can deliver that even better, bringing our resources together as one. Tom Fink, great chatting with you again uh, on this new old entity, I guess, or old Absolutely. new entity, however we're going to phrase it. It's the it. new bearings. Yes, it's, there it's you go. It's a new future. <laughs> Tom Fink, thanks. Thanks, Rhonda. I'm Rhonda Schapfler for The Street.